Hello, friends. This is E. Giuliano. It is 12th of April, 2022. This is the second part, part two of the weekly roundup for the week of 11th April. I'm jumping into the price charts and we are going to take a look today. Hmm, we've got the Doge, the Rune, the Atom, the Luna, the Matic, the AVAX, the Sol, the FTM, and the Dot. And if you want to check out the ETH, the XRP, Link, BNB, and Sofons and so forth, check the link in the description. It's the previous video of the uh, part one of this video. So let's go. Here we go. We got the Doge coin. Um, okay. So what do we have for Doge coin? Well, in the past week, last week, a nice move up to the 20 week moving average. In fact, traded even towards the top of the Bollinger Band, but then rejected down at the uh, 20 week moving average is where the price closed. So kind of weak with the, the wick, um, but at least it made it to the 20 week moving average. You could say that. So there's that. And generally, we're expecting an accumulation range of some sort here for the next coming weeks. Yeah, six weeks is not that much time. It's only six candles. And that brings us towards the end of May. So cool. We'll see what, what this ends up being. Like how long does this accumulation need to take place? And is it even going to be accumulation or is it gonna, is it going to distribute even further? and dump towards the downside. Okay, well, that's Dogecoin. We're gonna see um, a little bit more time, narrow these Bollinger Bands even more and just wind up for potentially a move to the upside here towards the Ichimoku cloud. Otherwise, yeah, it's a dump. Okay, there's the Dogecoin. Now, moving on, we have Rune BTC. So Rune BTC got a strong rejection at this previous resistance zone. Strong rejection closing at that line. Although the price did trade up towards the um, towards this Ichimoku cloud level, it broke above the top of the Bollinger Band level, but basically has been rejected top of the Bollinger Band and is now back down in uh, into this range and. So we're just wondering, are you coming down to this 20 week moving average at 1500 sats? Or are you going down towards the, uh, to the thousand sats? We're gonna find out. Maybe 1100 is your, is your target. But I mean, by that point, you might as well go to the thousand and get it over with. Um, yeah. Okay, well, strong rejection there. Let's see where it ends up. I'm looking for this previous support resistance to be the level of interest. So we're going to place a line here. Where we have this supports, 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 resistance, and um, we're gonna see what happens, okay? Rune against BTC. All right, next. Not much to say on some of these charts today. We'll see if Adam has anything different for us. No, I mean, it is getting, it is getting supported at this uh, previous, you know, resistance turned support level. You know, the, the wick has gotten bought up into, this uh, top of the Ichimoku cloud here. So we'll see what happens, but coming close to the, close to the uptrending support line. Can you see? So what's gonna happen here? That's an interesting thing because the lower end of the Bollinger Band is below this trend line. So if you're breaking this trend line, that's a pretty long-term trend line uh, from the beginning of 2021. So you start breaking that below that, if you don't reclaim it, then you're looking um, at some weakness because it's also previous 
um, previous resistance. Um, and, you know, even this deviation shows the, the strength of this level here. And um, yeah, it's just, you're below it again. And still, if you start breaking below this Ichimoku cloud here, um, and then down towards this Bollinger Band, uh, I mean, not as strong, but it's still okay. It, it, it has been said before on this channel that maybe it's more of a horizontal accumulation zone. And then again, it's a BTC chart, price and BTC, atom against BTC. So these ones, it's not the same as your, as your USD price charts, right? They just don't behave the same way. So, but they're good to, in my opinion, they're good to use because, I mean, are you a, a fiat thinker or a BTC thinker, I guess would be the same. All right, let's move on from Adam. Wait a second. Yeah. Yeah, we're all, we already broke down below that 20 week moving average a couple of weeks ago. We, we, we watched that. Tune into the previous videos and keep watching for more to find out where we go on these long term price charts, we're bringing weekly, weekly price charts. And that's, you know, that's a good learning opportunity for everyone. So we had this previous resistance zone here, now support and showing support again as the wick on this current weekly candle is, um, is testing that level, but has so far um, bounced away from it. That's it for now on the Luna price chart. We're still contesting a very important level. However, last week, I think is the important thing to consider here. So with the with last week, the candle actually trades um, the second highest trading week on record for Luna after the 7th of March week. Um, and also in terms of closing, it closed, well, a lot lower, okay? Um, but it closed, one, two. So the third highest close of a candle was right here. So, I mean, that's something. That's something. It, I think what's more is that it, it traded second highest, but it closed a lot further down. But even then, it still closed at the third highest close on the weekly time frame. So, I mean, it's still not shabby, but my overall point is this could be a turning zone here. This could be a distribution area uh, rather than a reaccumulation area. But I think all along we've said, we're gonna watch how the price interacts with this 20 week moving average as it comes up here. And also with this uptrending um, support line. But first and foremost, as we've seen, it's, it's this support right here, that's going to be um, the first thing we're looking at. Um, but because, because it's, you know, so soon and it's, it's coming very close to the, the uptrending resistance, um, it won't be long before we get there, especially if we have another down red candle. It's not that far away from these levels here. So, and that would mean a breach of this key critical zone across here. So yeah, there you have it. Um, Long-term big up move from Luna. What's gonna happen now? Is it gonna build a sideways move like BNB? Or is it gonna build a downwards move like some of the other ones we've seen? Lower into the Bollinger Band down here is once we start breaking through here, if we do, you look at lower into the Bollinger Band and each mobile cloud level here. But anyway, I think I think the best hope is that you, you parade along this line here somehow. And um, that way, at least you take more time and that way you might not go as low in price, I guess. So there you go, we'll see. But uh, the, the negative momentum is in, you know, we're, on, we're relatively negative and we still haven't gotten uh, to the negative zone in the histograms. So uh, it's, it's looking like there's going to be some negative momentum, some churning and possibly some dumping here for, for Luna. Um, it's been pretty high on the RSI. I mean, at least you're gonna come test something like the 50 levels, if not at least, you know, down to the 45, why not? I mean, and if anything, might need to clear the whole thing out. I don't know. 
I don't know what's going to happen. You know, sometimes the price charts give you signals and you don't know, don't know why, what the news is going to be that triggers these, these psychological uh, uh, behaviors, you know, of buying and selling. But uh, it looks like it's pricing in, in the chart for, for a move lower. But again, that could just mean more time sideways and down rather than like a big dump lower. You might get your support at Bollinger Band, lower end of Bollinger Band, Ichimoku Cloud region. That, that's, you know, it is, it is in confluence with previous resistance and uh, potential support zones here. But I think if you're coming down here, uh, whew, you're already, uh, it's looking scary. Any, any, anytime you're this high on a chart, it's looking scary. I mean, you got to keep it going. Otherwise, it's looking, otherwise it looks scary. This, at least you've got this here, this Ichimoku cloud for potential bouncing and support. That would be the bullish scenario. I don't think you can sustain all of this continuously. It has to break a trend line, an uptrending line at some point. And I think we're reaching that point, but anyway, we'll see. Okay, so that's Luna. It was nice to, to, in, to take a look at Luna. Here we have Matic. Also been enjoyable to watch Matic as, as the momentum has really slowed and wound down to a, a grind. So yeah, interesting interactions at the Ichimoku cloud here if we wanna look more specifically. Uh, but we haven't, you know, we're at this previous resistance turning to potential support level. Uh, that would be the best case for Matic is to bounce up to, to the 20 week moving average. And um, that would get you some time and some room above the each mobile cloud. But the way that everything is looking right now, and even with, the way the momentum is, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing uh, a little bit of a further grind down is still in the cards. And, you know, anything, as you can tell, if you're looking at this chart, anything below here, this 2,500 level, you're really on thin ice because it's pretty much air down to this level here of about, uh, what, 700. So, yeah. I'd say stick around this zone is your best bet. And to do that, you're gonna to need to bounce around a bit. So maybe it comes down a little lower first then bounces up and then comes back down. Uh, but I, just the fact that it's right in line with the cloud here, that that becomes, this is like the two ends of a magnet they, that are the same polarity. They, they repel each other. Uh, maybe the price trades into it, but then it'll it'll go away from it. It always goes away from it, either below or above. Doesn't really hang around for too long. Although you know there are times, yes, for sure, there are times where where prices can can hang around the the cloud and then go higher. Of course, yes. But uh, then you have all the this price action here, and if you're going to spend all of that time there, that is very strong. I would expect probably you'd go lower first. Um, but then uh, it's tough. You really want to get above fast again, like reclaim that. Otherwise, it's, it, it, it just becomes more of a resistance the longer that you are below it until, you know, until you dump enough that then you might be able to reclaim it. Anyway, so that's the, this, the, the other thing about Matic is that we I haven't mentioned um, is we have broken now below the HMO cloud, but more importantly as well uh, on some level, could be more important, is that we're breaking down this long-term trend line. This long-term trend line has been broken down by this price action here. Last week was uh, a bearish candle through there. Nice bare red candle. Um, and this is a long-term trend line from again, back in the beginning of 2021. So I guess that might be our theme for today is like breaking long trend lines to the downside. So that's that's a point of weakness here for Matic. Okay, and it's also with this wick, it's getting rejected there already. So that's, I'd say the negative thing for Matic to pay attention to. Okay, that could mean this box will get filled. I think that's all I need to say here. Let's move to Avalanche, AVAX. 
All right. All these letters here, they, they are currently not serving. Um, what are we looking at here? Yeah, even Avalanche, okay, it's got a nice sideways action, but this could just be a whole distribution complex. Look, you're making lower highs here than you were here and consistently, and there's wicks enough, and then you get a bearish candle down here and it breaks below the 20 week moving average. Now you're getting a bit of, of support pressure from, from down below, um, but already you've made a, a, a signal towards a bearish uh, sign of things like more continued correction uh, to the downside and lower end of the Bollinger Bands down here, which is below this critical support level here. So breaking below the 20, 20 week moving average for Avalanche, um, you know, if I want to take a key trend line, let's play key trend line game. So we have this one to here, it got broken. So we'll take this one and, you know, there's really nothing left. Now it's going sideways and you had a bit of an upturn here. Yeah, I think that's the line. Uh, you had a bit of an upturn there, okay? Where after breaking down, it bounces back up, then it broke below it. And when it went back up, it got rejected by the underside. So at this point, it's like, what we're really working with now is this horizontal support level. And we've broken the 20 week moving average, this horizontal support level is potentially next, but you never know, it could uh, wind up and then continue higher. Again, six weeks, eight weeks brings us here. So it could be flat depending what Bitcoin price is doing and what the avalanche USD price needs to do. So that's it for Avalanche. Solana. Join us, Solana. Come on, Mia. Okay, everyone, I think you need to just quickly fast forward this one. Okay. Just do your. Um, do your like uh, the fast forward button. Just press that because we don't have we don't not using a, an editor here. We don't have an editor. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Oh, come on. Uh, this is lame. Anyway, okay, we're back in action here. All right, friends, here we go again. I hope you just fast forward it. So here we are. Okay, here's the Solana chart. Now, what is important to look at here? We had a break out to the upside of the uh, of the downtrending line but this move here all the way up to the 20 week moving average is now rejected so hey the good thing is you've got support currently at this ichimoku cloud region here okay um this area here supporting but it's thin so how much are you going to hold that well, at least you're still back in this box as well. So yeah, but you got rejected at this 20 week moving average. Um, so the next target, if upon breaking down would probably be down here at, uh, at this 130 level. And currently at a 250 level, that's a big dip. So maybe, uh, maybe you can stick around here. Maybe Solana stays here and pops over the 20 week and continues higher. Uh, or it like continues higher as in chops around a bit first before going higher. I don't think it just starts running right away. Uh, but again, lower high than this. This is really the first lower high after all this dumping. Yeah, maybe you can call this a lower high, whatever, but it's not a significant lower high where you had a bit of a, you have a, a, a enough of a rally to call this now your lower high. 
So you have your high and now your lower high. So I, I expect this box to be reached, but it just sometimes it's difficult to imagine that that's what's going to happen. So we'll see. Stick around to find out. None of us know, and we're going to watch the price action. But um, it's laid out here. Either this becomes your support, um, and you chop around and go higher, or uh, or we're coming down here. That's basically the sense. Okay. That's Solana, and we've got two more. We're going to take a look at Matic and then Dot Matic. Matic uh, taking a beating here, but it's it's really it's really holding this. Um, it's really holding this support line. However, you know, it, it did move up similar to Solana three weekly candles, but it could not touch the 20 week moving average. So that's a weaker move. And uh, yeah, expect a move in my, in my estimation, expect a move down to this Ichimoku cloud at least. Um, and if not, probably down to this next level here, which is um, relating back to these prices. So this level here uh, is about 1700 sats. And then you're below the Ichimoku cloud, and then who knows from there where it goes, but it's not pretty. Um, yeah, if anything, good likelihood of coming down to these types of levels to like a thousand level. But uh, that's, I'd say it's fair to say here, 1700s, and then we can go from there, depending on what's the whole uh, situation. But there's also this good enough possibility that this becomes a, a stronghold here for Phantom and there becomes some market sentiment that pushes price back up. Uh, but just based on this previous price action, it does, just doesn't, doesn't get the sense that that's what's meant gonna be happening. Here's your first, again, similarly, it's your first lower low. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's your first lower high. I hope I was saying lower high on the Solana stuff. If I was saying something different, that would suck. Lower high, this is your first lower high. And even then, it's really not significant. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe it does end up chopping around at some level to to find a bit of this next lower high. But if this is your lower high, I mean that's such an insignificant move to the higher to keep going down. So that's weakness. All right, I think I think that's it for Phantom. Yeah. Okay. Finally, we have dot. And rejection at the 20 week moving average, rejection at the downtrending resistance, rejection, rejection, rejection. So, um, what else shall we say about, yeah, let's use that. What else shall we say about DOT? I mean, there. this is our support zone, so, look for support here. However, if you start breaking down, then you got your lower end of the Bollinger Band here and potential move further down. Um, maybe this becomes a finishing level, level and then it can pop over. Uh, but it just got rejected around this 20 week moving average. And now you've made your second lower high. So we'll see, maybe the momentum will slow. Look, you, at least in this case, you're, 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 you're more likely to gain positive momentum. So that's actually in Dot's favor. So actually, I won't be surprised. I won't be surprised if we get a little bounce over, uh, but then I don't know what happens after that. And we got each mobile cloud up here. And, and I mean, already it couldn't break this 20 week moving average to the upside, but uh, hey, maybe on the second time it does. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think momentum wise, Dot has the best chance so far. Anyway, we'll see. I would target this upside here if it is gonna make a move. Well, first I would target the 20 week moving average and this previous rejection level, but after that, it would be up here. Uh, I wouldn't even bother targeting here in, in that sense. Like I, I targeting here, of course, I mean, it could just be a wick, be anything, these things happen all the time. But in terms of a significant move, I would I would look for it to move up here. Otherwise, we're looking to, to reach the lower end of this, of this horizontal uh, rectangle here. And then worst case scenario, it, it tumbles even further. But uh, yeah, like I said, momentum wise, this looks at least positive that it could maybe, maybe it could sustain itself around these levels. Yeah, we'll see. That would be bullish in my estimation. You get your, um, you get an even, yeah, an even more of a bullish case for DOT. So we'll see. All right, that's it for me today. I'm done with these price charts. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I hope that has been informative and thought provoking for you. I'm wishing you well.
Okay, until the next time, all the love, peace, and happiness that you can manage. Goodbye.